Hello Summoners, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the worst champions going into patch 12.12. I think everybody in all ELOs can agree that, sometimes, it can be pretty difficult to win a game of League of Legends. The game itself is pretty complicated, and then you have to deal with trolls and toxic teammates on top of that. So why make things harder on yourself by just picking a bad champion? You want to play something that you can enjoy, but how can you possibly ever enjoy picking a D-tier champion that handicaps you from champion select in a competitive game? By voting the picks on this list, you're increasing the odds that you don't lose the game before it even starts. And of course, we have other meta videos to show you the right picks to go with, so be sure to check those out as well. Now let's get into it. We'll be starting things out in the top lane with Gwen. Gwen was already a pretty iffy pick in the lower and middle elos, and honestly, even in high elo, her stats were pretty up and down. So it goes without saying that her nerfs last patch really did her in, and now she's absolutely abysmal. There's no doubt that she was absolutely broken in pro play, so seeing this happen makes sense, as is often the case for many other champions that we show in this series. The way she is now, almost all of her winning matchups are against super low win rate champions, but what's the point of trying to force her to work in those situations when other broken champions can use that lead so much better? Avoiding the champions on this list is a good starting point to rank up, but if you're actually serious about climbing, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros, like CoreJJ, Alphamu, and Xmithy to really help you understand how to play your role. If you want a more personalized experience, we have coaches available 24-7 ready to help you guys become the best. Our coaches are top tier players that have spent years climbing the solo queue ladder to get where they are now, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. Find our site down in the description below. Now let's get back on topic, shall we? Just like Gwen, Jace is another top laner that has been heavily balanced around the popularity in high elo and pro play. When he's strong, Jace is really oppressive. Being both a ranged poke champion and having the ability to do big, bursty combos with a disengage tool makes him just super overloaded. He can deal with literally any laner, and later on becomes both strong as a split pusher and when grouped. There's basically no downside to him. But that's an objective take on the champion. He's also very difficult to play, so everything I said really doesn't apply to like 99% of the player base. He's just too hard to make work outside of the tippy top of the ladder. Even if you play quite well, you have to be playing perfectly. Not only is he mechanically intensive, but he also needs a lot of resources from the team. To really abuse his laning, you need a jungler that plays around him the whole time, and out of lane, if you don't have a huge lead, he's pretty much useless. And that's all talking about when Jace is at his best. Right now, he's in a much worse spot, being really only ever used in super high elo as a counterpick in certain matchups. If he's no longer the blind pick king up there, then you definitely don't want to be picking him in the lower ranks. Taking a look now at the jungle, the first champion to avoid is Talia. Like every other mid-scope update that we've seen this year, hers made her pretty broken. Like, super broken. And she only got stronger with the durability patch since her biggest weakness was being bursted down by assassins. As a result, right hit her with some pretty hefty nerfs back on patch 12.10 and 12.11. Now her damage and slows are a lot weaker, and she's on the total opposite end of the spectrum. She loses early to most other junglers, and it's not like she's a fantastic pick for scaling. If you need an AP carry for the role, you may want to be picking up somebody like Fiddlesticks. The only non-off-meta jungle pick that is arguably worse than Talia is unfortunately Lee Sin. Traditionally, Lee Sin is a champion that is supposed to be stomping the early game, snowballing himself and his laners ahead. He would fall off, but that's okay. Your strong carries would do the heavy lifting in your team fights, while you use your kick to make peels or just really cool plays. But at the moment, he just isn't fulfilling that at all. He's just nerfed to the point that absolutely every other jungler beats him early and outscales him, so there's really nothing that you can do about it. Plus, like other champions that we have on this list, he's pretty heavily gated by how hard he is mechanically. So even when he is in a decent spot or even a strong spot, he still tends to have a pretty bad showing down in the middle to lower ranks. This is definitely a case where you should just hang up the champion in favor of something that does the same job but better and more consistently. Next up for the mid laners, our first champion is Ryze. It isn't just a list of awful champions without mentioning him. Seeing him so incredibly bad for so long just doesn't make much sense. I know Ryde has their little framework or guidelines or whatever they call it for buffing, nerfing, and otherwise balancing the game, but isn't there any room for some subjectivity? The reason Ryze is so heavily nerfed is due to his prevalence in pro play, but it's not always good to conflate popularity with success. While he was by far the most popular mid laner for the spring pro season, his win rate was actually negative. It would definitely be way more beneficial if Riot just looked at the numbers in pro play as well and, you know, see that he's not doing that well there. I don't even like Ryze that much, but why should any champion be in such a poor state for so long? At this point, give Ryze players their heyday and just make him giga busted for a couple of patches, or maybe one patch, or just schedule him for a BGU. Either way, something needs to change. 
And on that note, Riot has actually already announced a full VGU for Skarner quite a bit back, and just recently announced that Sivir was the target of their next mid-scope update. I'm happy for them, since Skarner is underplayed and Sivir is just in a weird spot where she's only really viable as lethality, but kind of what I'm deprived from right now these champions need, which is some love. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What champion would you rather give a VGU and mid-scope update to? Pick one for each. Let us know your answers in the comments down below. Now without further ado, let's get back on topic. The other super bad mid laner that we have for you is LeBlanc. There was a point where LeBlanc was our analyst's go-to mid laner, and he would pick it up to just fill the role. But now he hasn't really touched her in two or three seasons. She just feels absolutely awful. Even with a huge lead, the best he can do is burst down one foe, since she's pretty much just purely a single target champion. But accomplishing that is pretty difficult. Between items like Maul Malmordius and Shieldbow now existing, and Enchanters being such a powerful pick in the meta, she just doesn't really have too many options at the moment. And it's pretty unlikely that Riot's gonna go overboard with buffs on her, so she becomes a super powerful pro play pick when she is strong. Moving things down to the bot lane, we'll head with Aphilios. He's probably the biggest nerfed because of pro play victim of all of them. Ever since his launch, he's been a super high priority pick in the pro scene and in super high elo, but outside of that level of skill, he's pretty much always had a negative win rate. Unlike what we said about Ryze earlier, Aphilios' popularity wasn't baseless. He was just downright disgustingly strong, with strong laning and absolutely insane scaling. Super high DPS, high range, absurd healing, and the ability to slow and root. Having a turret that could literally solo enemies, having the potential to one-shot an entire enemy team with the right ultimate to make things just a little bit more broken, because why not? So Riot nerfed him, again and again, with literally dozens of nerfs. And even after all of that, he still pops up now and then in pro play. He's not nearly as OP as he once was, but they still managed to make him work. But that's the best of the best. In solo queue, his win rate has been bouncing between the low to mid 40s forever now. The other ADC to stay away from is Ezreal. Honestly, the jump between Aphilios and the other bad ADC is a pretty huge gap. Like, extremely bad. All by himself in the D tier. And the other champions are just kind of met in the champion list. This spot was a bit of a toss-up between Ezreal, Caitlyn, and Kalista, but we went with Ezreal because the nature of the pick is just not to carry. Most people that pick Ezreal are playing him to play as safe as possible. With super good challenger Korean mechanics, you can play Ezreal in a super aggressive way and hard carry some games, but that doesn't really apply to you any more than it applies to me. You'll almost never see an Ezreal 1v9 games. If you have a winning team, you coast to a win, and if you have a losing team, you'll usually sync with the shit. And if the game is neutral, the other ADCs are going to be just providing a lot more damage than you in 5v5s. So, while you may be low risk, you're equally low reward, and I just don't think that's what you want to be out of a role that's supposed to be dealing all the damage in the late game. Now for supports, the first pick that we'll have to warn you about is Set. There's a point in time where Set was one of the most popular oppressive supports to deal with, but that time is pretty far in the past. Most people have taken the hit and just played him in a solo lane, but there's still a little slice of the Set player's population that like to grief their ADCs. That may sound a little bit harsh to say to them, but hey, it's unfortunately the truth. Baking Set is literally subjecting your ADC to 1v2 in lane, and in the current bot lane meta, where supports is either a mage, enchanter, or senna, that's absolutely miserable. So, if you try to move up, you easily get disengaged and probably take half your health in the process. The other support that you should never pick in the bot lane is Galio. And there's a much bigger percentage of Galio players that, you know, may surprise you. While with Set, it's only about 6% of the time that he's played as a support. Over 40% of Galios picking him are playing that role. But why? What does Galio provide in a 2v2 situation? His engage takes too long to wind up, so it's easily disengaged by other supports, and even if you can land it, it's not like he does as much damage as the other engaged champions. And when you're not going in, you and your ADC are just going to be constantly ignored and poked down. If his ultimate isn't a 5 year long cooldown, maybe it should be worth as a counterpick to some big AoE damage threats. But there's just so much needed downtime where you don't really have it available that it isn't nearly enough to redeem the pick. He's really only ever useful as a counterpick in mid lane to assassins, and even then, they're so weak right now that you're usually better off just picking a better carry. And that about wraps things up for our 10 worst champions of patch 12.12. .12. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you sub so you never miss out on our meta guides, and so that you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know what champions you want to see at VGU and Midscope Update down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss the league further, or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.